Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste Now the chapters 6 and 7 of the Mahatmya are very technical and they're detailed descriptions of the rites that are supposed to accompany the recitation of the Shiva Purana. Now obviously we're not doing all that here and actually for the modern person it's almost impossible to do these rites. You would either have to be very wealthy or have a temple or other organization sponsoring these rites because they're very complicated and they use a lot of arcane ingredients and mantras and so on that these days very few people know. Even among sadhus, even among brahmins, this knowledge is very rare and scarce. So I don't think it's appropriate to read through all these details because for, you know, 9,999 out of 10,000 people, they're just not practical at all. Rather, uh, I want to focus on the benefits of hearing Shiva Purana. And our humble attempt here is going to be, well, kind of stripped down, kind of lean and mean, you know, plain. But I want to get to the philosophical part of the Purana and also recount the stories, which are wonderful. So with that said, I'd like to go into the benefits of reading, hearing, or giving discourses on the Shiva Purana. I'm going to read from the Fala Shruti section of chapter 7, the final chapter of the Mahatmya. The days of discourse on Shiva Purana must be considered very excellent, even on a par with millions of sacrifices. Gifts duly bestowed on these excellent days, even though they may not be much in quantity, yield everlasting benefit. Many kinds of valuable objects, cloth, ornaments, vessels, and much wealth in particular should be given to the discoursers, those who give silken cord and new cloth for the book of Shiva Purana become yogis endowed with knowledge in every birth they take. Those who give carpets, deer skins, cloth, elevated couches and planks to keep the volume of Shiva Purana on, attain heaven, enjoy all desirable pleasures, stay in Brahma's region for the duration of a kalpa, and finally attain Shiva's region. Undoubtedly, thus, everything shall be fruitful, and the fruit too shall be excellent, since there is no greater thing in the three worlds than this. O Shaunika, by the power of this gift and of Shiva Purana, he shall secure the blessings of Shiva and be freed from the bondage of worldly existence. If these rites are performed, the Shiva Purana shall yield entire fruit, enjoyment of worldly pleasures and salvation. The Shiva Purana holds the mark of distinction among all Puranas. It is highly pleasing to Shiva it wards off the element of worldly existence. Those whose ears listen to the story of Shiva Purana, those whose tongue adores the attributes of Shiva, and those who are always engaged in the meditation of Shiva, cross the ocean of worldly existence. Now, it really doesn't get better than this. For the small cost of spending the time necessary to hear 
the Shiva Purana, one gets benefits that are basically eternal. Release from material existence is no small thing. And the stories in this Mangala Charanam, uh, the Mahatmya, are very much illustrative of the fact that even hearing a portion of Shiva Purana with faith given by a realized being can lead to eternal benefits, such as being admitted into Shiva's kingdom. Now, this is not a small thing. <laughs> this is really the biggest thing. Because, as we have discussed several times, mukti, or, for example, going to the world of Shiva, uh, being a close associate of Shiva, adopting a form that resembles Shiva's, having qualities and powers that resemble Shiva, or ultimately merging into Shiva, these are the forms of mukti that require moksha, or liberation from material existence, as their condition. So in other words, to receive any of the benefits of Shiva Purana in terms of mukti, one must attain or be given moksha, release from repeated birth and death. This is no small thing. This is a big deal. So it underlines or emphasizes the statement herein that Shiva Purana has the distinction among all Puranas. It was the final Purana narrated out of the 18 major Puranas at the thousand year sacrifice in Naimisharanya. So uh, it's viewed as the climax, the acme, the height of all the 18 Puranas. And in fitting with that, it gives the highest benediction, not simply uh, mukti within the material world, like going to heaven um, or going to Vaikuntha or uh, going to some, you know, worlds like Tapalok, Janalok, Maharlok, uh, those worlds, even Brahmalok, are temporary. So th that kind of liberation doesn't really appeal to those who are really serious about spiritual life. And one should not strive for benefits that are going to be exhausted. One should strive for the highest benefit, which is never ending. And that is the result of hearing Shiva Purana nicely. So now, in the next section, we will begin the first Sanghita, which is called Vidyeshwara, Vidyeshwara Sanghita, and, and Vidya means knowledge, specifically verbal knowledge, book learning, philosophical learning. And Ishwara, of course, means the king or controller. So Vidyeshwara can be translated the king of knowledge. This knowledge, once heard, gives you the point of view to understand the succeeding Sanghitas that deal mostly with stories, but also contain quite a bit of philosophy, very high philosophy, about Shiva and Shakti. We've already had a taste of that in the prayers of Chanchula when she approached Shakti, Parvati, Uma, and offered nice prayers. Those prayers, while succinct, are on a very high level of realization of the nature of Shakti. So similarly, the whole of Shiva Purana contains many wonderful prayers by demigods, uh, Brahma, and many pure devotees that are full of nectarine descriptions of Shiva's qualities and nature. And this is, in a lot of ways, really the value of Shiva Purana, because then by hearing, contemplating, and meditating 
on these topics, one's mind becomes purified and one becomes able to actually understand Shiva, at least to the extent that is possible for limited human intelligence. So I invite you to stay with us and continue to hear this series, Shiva Purana, as we go into the Vidyeshwara Sanghita, the king of knowledge that gives all benefits up to and including complete liberation from material existence. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti, Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>